Welcome to another video. a squared plus c squared equals 2b squared and abc are integers. We're supposed to prove that c squared minus a squared is a multiple of 48. Now, this question is, like I always say, easy if you know what to do and almost impossible if you don't know what to do. Let's get into the video. Immediately I saw this question, I said, why is there a two here? I know that the fact that you have a two there will have to do with the whole concept of parity, whether the other side must be even, but obviously the other side is even because you have two terms. The sum of any two terms is always even, unless one of them is odd and the other is even, and that might be the case here. So that further complicates the problem, okay? And here, why did they choose 48? Because 48 is not a prime number. Prime numbers are easy to deal with. So firstly, you have to go here and say that 48 is the same thing as 16 times three. So it's three times two to the fourth. So this is the prime factorization of 48. So whenever you're trying to show whether something is divisible by 48, it is smart for you to break it down into two concepts. Firstly, is it divisible by three? If it's a yes, you've solved half of your problem. Now, is it divisible by two to the fourth, which is 16? So we're gonna be thinking, in, in other words, we, we're gonna be saying, is c squared minus a squared divisible by three and also divisible by 16? So, we need to show that three divides c squared minus a squared and 16 divides c squared minus a squared. So there are two parts to this journey. So I know that I will not have enough space to write everything I'm gonna say. So I'm gonna take my time, write it on this side. So the first thing we're gonna do is to show that three divides c squared minus a squared. And the explanation is pretty straightforward. I used it in uh, one of the previous videos I did on divisibility by three or prime numbers. Now observe this. For any number, let's, let's say x, okay? Let's say x is an integer. When you write x mod 3, let me write it mod 3. So any number written mod 3 is either divisible by 3, which means your answer is going to be 0. Your, the remainder will be 0. So x mod 3 means what's the remainder when x is divided by 3. It's either there is no remainder or the remainder is plus 1 or minus 1. So the remainder is either 1 or 2, but you can write 2 as minus 1 because two is one less than three. So that's what you have. Now see what happens when you square any number mod three. What you get is when you square zero, you get zero. When you square plus or minus one, you get one. So let's go back to the original question. This number here, b squared, is definitely zero or one. Now let's take the first case. If b squared mod 3 is congruent to 0, then the 2 on the left-hand side must be 0 because that's the only time that, that there's no negative, okay? So those are the only two things you can add together to get 0. So it means that a squared, then a squared must be congruent to c, to c squared and it is congruent to zero. And if this is the case, then c squared minus a squared will be zero. 
and 0 mod 3 means it is divisible by 3. That's the first case. If you do the second case, um, if, okay, this implies 3 divides c squared minus a squared. I'm done with that first implication. Now the second one, let's say b, b squared mod 3 is congruent to 1. Then 2b squared mod 3 is congruent to 2. The only way to add up two remainders to get 2, okay, for squares, remember when you square any number mod 3, it is either 0 or 1. There is no 2 option. So you can't have 0 and 2. It's either you have 0, 0 or 0, 1 or 1, 1. But the only way to write 2 by adding two things is we say then um, a squared is congruent to c squared, which is congruent to 1, which implies that when you subtract this from this, it would be 1 minus 1, which is still 0 mod 3, implies 3 divides c squared minus a squared. So in either case, we have shown that 3 divides c squared minus a squared. I was wondering if I could have fit this in this space. I think I did a good job writing out the summary in a way that doesn't take up so much space. And the strategy I just used to make this is what I'm going to use to show that c squared minus a squared is divisible by 16. And this is something you want to adopt when you're doing divisibility, especially when squares are involved. Just find something convenient and relevant to the problem. So here, I'm going to show again, just using this same reasoning, but with a little twist, that c squared minus a squared is divisible by 16. How do I do it? By the way, this guy is what helps us to be squared. So let's start again. Okay, want to show that 16 divides c squared minus a squared. So we're going to consider the characteristics of a and c, or a squared and c squared. Let's deal with this. For any, for any integer, B. Let, let me make that chart again. So we have x before I make the conclusion, okay? Um, let's say you have any number. You have x mod 16, and then you have x squared mod 16. What do you think happens? Well, any of these numbers is going to be, oh, and then we have 2x squared mod 16 okay maybe i should have done b you know what let me change it to b it doesn't matter b b b so we can make a list of all numbers let's just take the positive numbers okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ta 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 we don't need that much because you're, you're about to see what what's going to happen When 1 is squared, it leaves a remainder of 1, because 1 squared is 1, right? 16 is 0, remainder 1. 2 squared is going to give you 4. 3 squared is going to give you 9. 4 squared is 16, that's 0. Oops. 5 squared is 25, but when you divide 25 by 16, what do you get? You get 9. Uh-oh, we're back to this 9. 6 squared is 36, but when you divide 36 by 16, you get 0. No, let's you get 4. We're back, I said 4. So this goes here, this goes here, okay? My lines are not straight, okay? 6 squared is going to be 4. That's the remainder. 7 squared is 49, but that's going to be 1. So you notice that the only numbers that are going to be showing up when a square is divided by 16, the remainders are either 0, 1, 4, or 9. Notice the properties of those numbers. They are also squares. 
one is a square, four is a square, nine is a square, zero is a square, but it doesn't go. So the biggest square, less than 16, is the biggest number you're gonna get here. Now, see what happens when we multiply all of these mods by two. This gives us two, this gives us eight, this gives us 18, but we can't write 18 because it's greater than 16, so the remainder will be two. You see that? And then you get zero. And then that's, that's what happens. It, the, the cycle repeats. So by the time we get here, our options have reduced from nine to four. Now we only have zero, two, or eight. The possible options we have now are zero, two, or eight. For any integer b, 2b squared is congruent to 0 mod 16 or 2 mod 16 or 8 mod 16. Those are the three options we have, just as we had two options in the case of 3. Are we good? Okay. Now, don't forget that when you square any number mod 16, these are the possible options you're gonna get. So all we have to do is, how can we combine any two of these to get the possible options that we have? What are the options? It's either we get zero, or we get two, or we get eight. You see that our options are very limited, okay? You can only generate zero mod 16 from the left-hand side if both of them are zero. You can only generate two if both of them are one. You can only generate eight if both of them are four. Any uneven combination will not give you any of these numbers. I think I'm actually done with the proof. <laughs> this is it. Okay, so case one. If two B squared is congruent to zero mod 16, then a squared is congruent to c squared and it's congruent to 0 mod 16, right? Case 2. To b squared is congruent to the second option, um, 2 mod 16 then a squared must be congruent to c squared and must be congruent to 1 mod 16. And case 3, we got 2b squared is congruent to 8 mod 16. Then a squared is congruent to c squared and it's congruent to 4 mod 16. So in any case, a squared and c squared have the same modular remainder, modulus mod 16. So by the time you subtract one from the other, you will get zero in every case. So in any case, c squared, minus a squared is congruent to 0 mod 16. Therefore, 16 divides c squared minus a squared. Since 3 divides c squared minus a squared, and 16 divides c squared minus a squared, then 48 which is three times 16 divides c squared minus a squared. I hope I did not skip anything. I don't think I did, um, but that's the whole idea of this proof. That's how I saw it. Um, this was actually sent to me by that my super professor from New York a while ago, but I never looked at it. Just looked at it today and it caught my eye. Um, I hope you never stop learning because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.